Hey everyone, welcome to Coffee with Joe for Tuesday, December 1st, 2009. Joe, uh, Ben Bernanke, Fed Chairman, has been in the news recently with his op-ed in the Washington Post called The Right uh, Reform of the Fed, for the Fed. Um, he's concerned that some of the legislation that's moving forward in Congress, the Fed Transparency Bill that Ron Paul has put forward, um, these are not the proper kinds of reforms and that he should be left alone to do his job. He knows best. After all, as he says, this is a matter, the Great Depression is a matter that he has studied his entire <laughs> life. So he is the leading expert on the subject. In terms of his criticism of the legislation that's being put forward against him, he says, uh, these measures are very much out of step with the global consensus on the appropriate role of central banks and they should would seriously impair the prospects for economic and financial stability in the United States. And the Fed played a major part in arresting the crisis, and we should seek to preserve, not degrade, the institution's ability to foster financial stability and to promote economic recovery without inflation. Joe? That there's a consensus among, among uh, you know, the international financial community about what needs to be done? is is preposterous um if you read the central bank research uh papers and uh you know i subscribe and i read all of them pertinent to the big money picture pete okay and and what they really say about financial stability and financial instability is that they don't really understand anything about it that they understand so little about it that they're trying to figure out how to put measures in place to ensure uh, you know financial stability so the fact that he's saying that having the congress take a look at what happened uh where the, where the money went and all of that is uh is counter to uh the international consensus of how to restore financial stability again it's a preposterous statement and and so that's why i'm saying if i was a congressman pete i would pull him in and i would say Okay, Mr. Bernanke, this is your statement, and I would like for you to provide me with the justification for that statement because, Mr. Bernanke, I'm not one of your students. I'm here representing the taxpayers of the United States of America. You were in charge of running this ship after you studied the Great Depression, and you were in charge of having my taxpayer representatives lose trillions of dollars of their own real money. And now you are, your, your credibility is stained and strained before me. And for every statement that you make from now on, you're going to have to justify and prove to me that it's correct because I'm taking my job seriously. Now, that's the kind of thing that you might hear out of maybe one or two, okay? You might hear that out of Grayson. You might hear that out of Bernie Sanders, you know? You might hear that out of, uh, out of Ron Paul. But, uh, but the idea, you know, that, that, that to propose that there be in a public accounting of what happened in the crash. And by the way, that's one of the problems of the audit the Fed bill, Pete. That audit the Fed bill doesn't go anywhere near far enough. All that's going to do is to kind of lay out what happened. It's an audit, okay? Wait a minute, Joe. We're talking about the Fed transparency bill here. Bernanke speaks to this in the article. Let me read another quote to you. Independent does not mean unaccountable. In its making of monetary policy, the Fed is highly transparent providing detailed minutes of policy meetings and regular testimony before Congress, among other information. Our financial statements are public and audited by an outside accounting firm. We publish our balance sheet weekly and we provide monthly reports with extensive information on all the temporary lending facilities developed dur during the crisis. Just the first part of what we don't know is what review they have done themselves of 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 the policies that they had in place okay and which of those were the ones that led to the failure that's really the most critical element of making any progress going forward Pete is having an understanding of what went wrong okay you can publish all the reports that you want but but when there's a when there is a critical failure okay what you need to get is the report 
on the critical failure. Joe, That's Joe, let me defend him here. The Federal Reserve, quoting again, like other regulators around the world, they do own some responsibility here, did not do all that it could to have constrained excessive risk taking in the financial sector in the period leading up to the crisis. But he goes on to say, we have extensively reviewed our performance and moved aggressively to fix the problems. Great, great. Just send that over, would you? You know, send that over, would you? The extensive review. The, why is that not? Why is that not public information? But and by the way, that extensive review is gonna is gonna uh, fall on Bernanke and Geithner. Okay, that's what that extensive review. Him as a member of the Board of Governors, when you read his speeches from the 2002, three, four period, Pete, about the innovation, you know, that he promoted, all of that kind of stuff, uh, has to show that there was a failure, a, a total failure. That's the thing about Bernanke saying that I studied the Depression, Pete. You know, what part of the Depression did you study? Because if you didn't study the monetary policy of the 20s, that's what he repeated, you know. I went and repeated the monetary policy of the 20s, ended up with the question. And by the way, the Depression, Pete, sorry, but we need a little bit of perspective. When was the Depression? And when did it start? And when did it end? And where are we? Because the people that are studying the Depression haven't even opened the book yet, okay? This Depression. They haven't opened the book yet. 1939, were we still in the Depression? 1940, the war came along, boom. The Depression ended, okay, because everybody went to work with a gun to protect, you know, the, 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 the needs of the country. So everybody then all of a sudden had a government job, Pete, okay? But until that time, we had, you know, virtually 10 years. So where are we today? We're like in 1930, okay? Well, We're well, like, in, like in 1930. That's assuming so that the this, problems haven't been fixed. This is the Great Recession. It's being named the Great Recession, and the word is it's over, Joe. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Pete. Until you, until you, take, uh, until you analyze what went wrong, there's no way. It is not possible to put in place the proper fixes. And that's the only, that's the only benefit of the audit the Fed bill, Pete is the audit the Fed bill is capable of exposing the wrong-headed thinking of both the policymakers, A, and far more importantly, Pete, if you don't mind me say so, the system, the system, the systematic problems of the debt money system because, because when, we're, when they're candid, when they open that book, they're going to find that, that the debt money system uh, played a huge role the pro-cyclical nature of, of, of the debt money system played a huge role in making things worse, uh, you know, during that period. So the idea that, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Bernanke, but, you know, you're out of school, you're no longer a professor, you're a practicing manager, and as a practicing manager with our money system, you're responsible. You got no tenure, and that's what, you know, that's what this is really about, Pete. This is really about him trying to show he's the smartest, still the smartest guy in the room. I studied the Depression. I wrote my PhD. I promised Milton Friedman we wouldn't do that again. You got to listen to me. Joe, we, in the future, we'll talk more about the pro-cyclicality of the debt money system. More on that in the future. Thanks, Joe. Okay, Pete. Thanks. Ciao.